Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Eyes 8.6. Okay. Um, just to sort of show you, um, I'm creating a few um, motorcycle regiments here to attach to future created um, HQs just to give them a little more um, solidity. Little, you know, obviously, a motorcycle regiment isn't much of a fighting unit, but I do have a tendency, and we, I will expand this some more, um, to use, especially core level HQs as um, an additional combat unit, partially to get that um, general into the combat itself and get his um, stats up to. Um, get his bonuses up but also contribute those directly to the combat because the traits generally speaking only affect or only there if um, if you're running the um, the combat as it were you know in the combat not just out or commanding outside and also um, three light divisions here and I'm keeping very light no even any tank um, no, these aren't very good divisions. Um, may get expanded at some point with engineers or um, anti-tank guns. Engineers are almost essential for crossing rivers nowadays with black ices, at least last when we played. Um, speed, movement, most assuredly um, helpful for crossing rivers and combat as well. But not everywhere is there rivers, but also just simply... Um, how do I put this? More of a swarm element. Um, you know, we were going to have a lot of really good, just basic divisions here, quite capable of doing their thing. I just want a few additional um, units, and I'm trying to do this cheaper earlier on to build up practicals for other additional divisions that we're going to be building along the way. So doing a little bit of that, starting to very much now, June 38th to shift over from primary focus on um, building up of ICs to now starting to build up the army and of course we've been dealing with the various event given units okay armored fighting vehicle AA weapons uh, looking in the wrong place probably yes I am there we are cancel that and medium bomber prototypes have advanced very good which will be grayed out now we've got all of those up there those two are 39 and we'll get to them then Yeah, let's do that. Is there three in, three things? Yeah, oh, come on, stop doing that. Oh, medium armor designs increased too. Probably also grayed out. But just checking, yes. Okay, so well. Yeah, might as well. Let me give them money. No, we want to... We want to build up these resources. So we're going to decline at the moment. Money. Steel. Coal. Energy, whatever you want to call that. No, no, no. Yeah. We give them money for rare materials. Not that far down, so we're not going to do that at the moment. 
No. No, I want to get up to 5,000 again. Well, maybe we should do a little bit, but not... Not you. Probably should have done Japan. Since we said the country's name, let's go to Japan and take a quick look and see how the war is doing. Okay, well, we lost a big chunk of our money income. So dealing with some partisans up there, some commie partisans. Yep, we took back one of the provinces. So we're looking at it. Yeah, good. I know um, in a... Um, I'm not sure on this version, but an earlier version of the game, this had Chinese cores on it. Taiwan did. Um, I created an event because we had the, um, I think it was communist partisans. The the AI not putting any, um, you know, leaving any garrison here. And then there was a communist partisan revolt. And so I figured, no, um, Taiwan is um, Japanese enough that um, at this time, obviously most of the, most of the people are ethnically um, Chinese, basically. And getting some detailed discrepancies to that, but um, but it just well enough organized that they shouldn't have large scale breakouts of communist partisans enough to to overthrow the occupation. Is my point with that event, not any statement that it should be. Japan owned, but just in this time frame. But we do get the communists in other parts, so but they're doing okay. We could maybe do with a naval invasion down here somewhere, but they're going to take this area soon, it looks like. And what technology did we just... Oh, truck and pine mover. Which we will stop right now. Research of that. Let's do special forces upgrade. Now, uh, yes, we'll sell you supplies for money. We need the money. Oh, we're no longer getting that. That went fast. Can you give them supplies for money? Certainly, yes. Yes. Why did we... Did I start selling energy again or something? No, we want to come here. Nope, it just are expanding factories most likely. Um, like I said before, I made a mistake of not researching coal processing technologies as quickly as we should have. That would be helping considerably. Because it's just hitting us pretty hard there. Could we give them supplies for money? Sure. Ah. Yes, we will increase our submarine flotillas. Let's move these down here. Yes, there we go, that looks good. We're going to get a lot more of these in here. Okay, well, one thing we are going to need is... more of these even though we may not be we 
yeah, we will be, you know, obviously we'll be stopping a lot of this trading and a lot of it is inefficient small stuff once the war gets started, but we will need transports. I have to keep switching my thinking back and forth between those those transports of the type that are used for invasions in Hoi 4, but not here and other things. Okay, yes, Saudi Arabia. Okay, small fuel tank research. Okay. And the reason that sort of happened pretty quick, even though I think we started that one first, was because of the advances of some of the events. That pushed that along a little quicker. Yeah, let's increase ammunition capacity. Well, what's still doing? Um, the motorized support unit is also increased too. Okay, that would be down here. Cancel that. Let's come over here and we already got those. That. Yeah, we'll do that as well. Okay, I don't want to do this, but we're going to... Oh, boy. So I know a lot of our allies want to... Let's see, can we buy... Um... No, nope, France is pissed at us. Okay, well... Hmm. Ah, oh, Japan, maybe. It's super cheap, so let's buy a bunch. Good. Hopefully that, once that kicks in, will put us into a real positive state. Yeah, Sadie. Good. We need to get expanding there. Oh, well, okay. Okay, that's gone away already. Let's try another um, attempt with the U.S. Let's just see about selling 20. Hopefully they won't cancel that. And the Soviets. They've got some money. Let's see if we can... Also sell 20. Okay, good. So hopefully that will help a little bit. Okay, supply transportation advance. That is very nice. Hmm. 
use a group training. Okay, and the uh, Zeus Z1, Zeus is, um, uh, is that this guy's name or just, um, I think so, I'm pretty sure. Why don't I have, I wrote this event up. Um, I should have the guy's, the, the creator's name properly, full, you know, first and last name. I'm pretty sure he, Zeus, but, or is that, yeah. Um, this was a mechanical computer. I do believe it was powered on electricity, but it's um, not a vacuum tube type um, computer that the IBM and whatnot was working with um, in the U.S. So this helps compute things. It doesn't allow you to play games, at least. None that I would consider a game. Um, completed in 1938. So we've got um, 180 days on machine computing gaming. So let's, before we click that, let's come over here. Um, I just want to see. Okay, we have none there now. Um, see, that we already have that boost of cruiser crew training from... Other events, mostly the SA, I think. Marine, but so we got that. Now we come back, and one of the part of the reason I'm doing this is one of the viewers um, will have been now back. Well, I think it was on like the first video, but um, he just recently commented um, of the series about why wasn't the bonuses showing up or something. Um, well, this is where they show up here, and. So if you're not paying attention or if you're not, you know, I don't think there's a bunch of other events that would push this naturally over. Um, there are cases that probably through mine and Black Eyes and other, other sub mods might push some um, tech from zero over to the top um, eventually over a few years. But rarely is the stuff designed to give you a full um, boost up over your current level so we're not going to keep this going because it's obviously too you know too early but it does give you a substantial boost um, once you okay I don't want to um, once you um, start researching it for that one there let's see if we can we tell where this new no probably not doesn't show up okay Okay, yes, it's hardly anything, but yes, yes, I'm trying to get money here. Okay, um, no, it's upgrading. Let's see, and I think these replacement ones are all dealing with, um, yeah, this, we're currently producing stuff. We just delayed it, and it's just checking to see if we want to rebuild it. Um, I don't believe it's too free or too cheap. It's just for immersion purposes. Okay, diplomatic report um, with all that's going on with Czechoslovakia. Um, Edward Bernays, president of Czechoslovakia, gets on the cover of Time magazine in the U.S. And I know um, all the viewers now know what a magazine or an old-style paper magazine is that you get on a magazine stand or get mailed to you that it's paper it's sort of folded in half and stapled and you get to flip through it of course but somebody in 20 years may be watching this and going what's a magazine or whatever um and of course most of you don't know well that's probably a bit of an overstatement um, a few of you hardly don't know what time it is it was a um, super important magazine way back when nowadays i think it still technically exists but no one cares um, so, um, making the cover of Time in the U.S. Um, is a um, fairly big thing, um, and it's, of course, promoting Czechoslovakia's position against ours, so it, you, our relations with the USA are hurt. 
by that. Okay, air bases in the former um, Austria. Oh, smart. Okay, Ostreich. Um, yes, we want that. And we're returning manpower pool from southern Germany's air bases. So that's good. Okay, close air support prototypes, which I believe are grayed out. Yes, good. Um, pretty well up on a lot of those. Well, I don't want to totally neglect my Navy either. Carrier crew training, not really yet. Carrier group doctrine, like cruise rescort wall. Well, as long as we have one other, let's do. Let's start with this one because we'll have some of these sooner. We will get the one carrier, but that's hardly, hardly much. Okay, German Polish trade agreement, an economic agreement. And the payments for goods signed in Berlin um, between Poland and the German Reich. This will improve relations with Poland. Um, let's see. Uh, that, I believe, is the Polish minister there. That is um, Christians van Roth. Roth. Um, there. Um, in the photo in Berlin. Um, during this time so we can go with this which um, is going to cost us money um, goods unfortunately we're going to freaking lose energy god damn it and gain a bunch of rare materials which we have plenty of right now and um, metal which we don't have plenty of but that or no I'm going to go no normally I say yes because um, improved relations and rare materials are a good thing but I'm just so starved of energy right now. So we're going to say no. That's an event from TRE originally um, created by um, George 1941. And, uh, so I've got to do something about that. whole situation with the mod at some point here okay um, Japanese youth leaders um, this is they're not normally uniformed like this in Japan to my understanding um, they sort of had a uniform because Germany likes uniforms when they came and visited so this improves our relations with Japan um, they're Deutsches Mulheren Arbeiter the German mills operation, one of the many magazines covering the Reich's um, uh, Reich uh, uh, butchering that agenda of blunt and Boden, um, blood and soil. Uh, going on. Give it. No, I don't want fuel. I'm trying to build my money up. No. Some more engine armaments. Okay, grayed out, but let's see now. Let's go for fighter pilot training. No, I'm trying to increase money. Um, how much money do they have? Not much left. Okay, they're buying. They've got lots of money. Let's see if the U.S. will trade agreement sell more spawn. See if we can do another twenty.
Okay, Battlefield Commander. The Battle Commander recognition advanced. Good. The biggest thing currently with this is reducing time between attacks by now six hours, three hours per increment. So that is very important. I believe also it will help get us Battlefield Commanders. Um, Battle Commanders later on. We will put this over to ground crew training and machine gun focus advance in our fighters. Which is good and we will convert that to well let's do twin engine bomber crew layout. Um general major um student um another event contributed by George nineteen forty one but I had a hell of a time finding this photo. Um, uh, all of the photos that I could find, or a lot of the easy photos I could find, some very good ones, some very nice ones, um, all had um, students' knight's cross, which he had earned, um, was it for Rotterdam or whatever, one of the, the jumps. I'd find a good pre-war photo of of student in what would be a, not necessarily exactly 1938 I don't know the exact date but this is a pre-war photo of student um, and that was hard to find I try to get photo you know I don't want to put a 1944 photo of Hitler say in 1938 or vice versa I try to very much put this in so this will give us a little more air, airborne unit because he's commanding our um, in setting up our training, we'll lose some supplies, which we have a lot of right now, which is that's what we do. So we will do that. Oh, and we also need to um, deal with that. Um, almost a half a thing. Oh, I'll just make the damn decision. Toughness or defensive. Let's go with toughness. I don't know. One or the other, you can't do both. Though in times in past, and I don't know if you still can, you can steal the other one. So you may have both. It's at least I've had that happen at least one game. Okay, and I'm also noticing they're entirely out of spies. And let's so let's stop the. The Japanese spying for the moment. Focus it where it's there. Okay, Japan or gun position twin engine airplanes have advanced. I like this system, particularly within the realities of what was it here? Um, gun position. Um. Gun position to an engine airplane. Oh, is it? Um, no. Oh, it's this one. Okay. We're now on 36, so we're going to let that go. Um, I like this incremental um, balanced work approach, how you want to do this. But I think the sort of the black ice um, Hearts of Iron 4 approach is so much better. Give them money up. I'm trying to build my money up. It's so much better. Um, in that you are really trying to focus on um, researching historical models. You can sort of tweak them still. Well, they still have a the tweak system, but it's put, shall we say, within the sort of historical realities of the type of, say, aircraft, and, oh, it had one engine at start, and then there was another engine, so 
you can upgrade the engine only one time or some other model you can upgrade it two times because historically they you know upgraded the engine over time a bit more and things like that and that really I think well, we shouldn't be doing this till that one over because of a most likely at least because of an event so we'll convert that over to there and that over there So I like that so much better. I mean, both are, you know, I totally get the idea, you know, what if, say, um, Hungary wants to focus in on a really good um, close air support fighter and forget about tactical bombers or whatever else and not want to make all the, the historical mistakes. So I totally get that idea within a realistic um, setting to make stuff and focus more in on something than than what it did on historically and that that's a good way but I personally prefer um, the various historical models and as many of you know I did the Japanese series recently for black ice and I wasn't because one I think it's not balanced well um, the amount of research versus the amount of things you research there's a lot of different um, aircraft types that Japan has. They're unfortunately not all, shall we, you have to step through all of the different ones because they're different design companies. Um, so they're not all dependent on each other. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to make the mistake of building bad models, but I sort of like some of the, um, what, I think it was the Messerschmitt 210? Because the 110 is sort of the standard twin engine, um, uh, destroyer as they called it at the time um, and they wanted to build a follow-on to it and I think it was called the 210 and it sucked and it was really bad um, eventually they come out with the 410 and that's actually I, if I remember correctly this is all coming my memory off of Wings of the Luftwaffe a very good seri series but um, the 410 was a good replacement for it a twin engine um, multi-role um, aircraft that could do um, ground attack really well, could do um, bomber interception, night fighter type stuff. It had a lot of multi-role capability, so it was a good successor. So it's one thing to to force a player to step through bad research um, choices, but I sort of like the idea that you don't necessarily have to put them into production so that you go, oh yeah, well this was this, oh, that didn't work out so well. Now move on and you can decide well no we're going to keep our older better or maybe older but not you know the the 210 might be better in a little bit but not much of a better situation so we'll just keep the older 110s in production which is sort of what they did historically and um wait until you research better ones to truly change over so i really like that and what black ice is doing panzeru is doing good job um in hearts of iron for um oh, oh we're talking about this okay we got that and now what we want to do here is hmm, I don't know because we're not going to be upgrading this until 40 so I think we can leave these for now um, I am building a couple of um, we'll build, build a few more heavy bomber units but nah they don't need to be all that updated I think we'd rather come in and do nav pilot training No, we're not. Um, okay, you're still freed out. Well, um, they got enough money. Maybe they will buy some supplies. Yes, good. Here we go, not a lot, just some. Good. Hopefully they'll keep that going for a while. I want to get over 5,000. Money, whatever the hell this is. Supposed to be. Reich marks or dollars or something. Turret guns advance. In my opinion, Germany just did okay with the turret guns. I think 
Probably the U.S. was the best at that. Yeah, I just keep checking air stuff. Yeah, come over here. No, oh, thank you. We have a deficit here, yeah, so it's getting bigger. But it's slowly eating this down while we're unfortunately well, but oh that ain't good. Okay, um Let's see, the U.S. has a surplus of every damn thing. Um, let's just do that. Buy coal from the U.S. Okay, very unhistorical, but partially my fault. Right now, reevaluating some of the coal that I took away. Early in the game, it's more or less started the game for Third Reich events. Seeing how bad this is here. And... we I grow it, and I grow it back larger eventually than... Um, I take away. And obviously, within the game tech... Within the game, there is the... Um, the resource growth here already to grow resources. I'm trying to think about the how to mimic it um, historically, but no, no, we want to get this bigger. No, um. And I know it grew a lot over time, and I think grew more than than the you know coal and steel, but particularly coal. Um, and Germany has a huge um, reserves of it. That um, I think it grew bigger than the simple using the game mechanism did. So that's sort of, and I, so I sort of take because I presume a lot of you already know this, but I'm sort of taking that some people are somewhat newer to this. Um, Hearts of Iron, as I've experienced it, both in 3 and 4 now, are, to some degree, essentially um, uh, reverse-engineered games. Meaning, um, and one of the people who is trying to unreverse-engineer the game is Bill Kaur, um, one of the posters on the Hearts of Iron 4 um, Form, and I'll talk about that in a second, but is what they've sort of tried to do is go look at, okay, what does it take to build more or less the German army in, say, 1939? Oh, okay, um, takes, you know, this amount of factories, this amount of um, coal and steel and whatever else, and this is what then will come up with Germany. Um, okay, so they try to sort of figure it out and reverse engineer it and game balance it out. Instead of trying to get the stats on, well, how much coal did Germany produce in 1939, and how much coal did it produce in 36, and how much did it produce in 1942, and then try to do those numbers, um, and the only, obviously it's abstracted, the only way you can really sort of do that is then compare to France, Britain, and other nations that we sort of know about, never trust any Soviet period um, stats there. Um, not just that in the sense of the Soviet Union is lying to you in propaganda. They were lying to themselves. Um, uh, Stalin had preconceived notions. Um, it, if your coal mine didn't, I don't know, yearly expand 10% in production, um, you were shot for being a, a, a traitor to the state. So you reported that, hey, we produce 10% more coal. Um, and if somebody reported, oh, but you didn't give us 10% more coal, you know, the shipping thing. Oh, that must be some other saboteur, or you're lying. And so they just lied in their stats up and down the, the chain of command. 
um, at all levels. So I don't trust any stats. Now they're a guide. They're they're informative, but they're not they're not trustworthy stats of any of the Soviet. Now that at least under the Stalinist regime, I'm not talking you know under Brezhnev or something. I don't know what I don't think they were internally lying to themselves under Brezhnev or later. Um, Soviet regimes. They may be. I just don't know. But uh, I do know they were lying to themselves under the Soviet regime. And this is an, an internal, um, not for public knowledge stats. They were lying to themselves. And then, of course, what they were saying publicly, that was BS for various reasons, propaganda reasons type things. But um, so, and so instead of trying to dig out all the research, and a lot of this stuff isn't easily available because it may have been published but it's not necessarily in libraries that are easy to get to in books and all this stuff so i understand why um the hearts of iron people over the years haven't done good research just because that could be that would be a huge effort um like i mentioned earlier bill core he's gone on and uh, did i think the best research on the internet of internet resources um for things like aluminum in Asia and some of these other um, stuff that he's got, been able to go around and search out on databases that are available on the internet at this time and come up with um, various production levels of things like steel around the world and then try to go, okay, well, this is what um, steel was produced in 36. Okay, and then try to then with that uh, proportionately put it out between the different you know, countries, how much steel did France have versus Germany versus Britain versus, you know, try to do that kind of thing. And then how much did it change later on, you know, in 40 or whatever is the war is going on. He's really tried to, to do the stat based thing to, to look at, to see how it's done. So I took um, this, just giving you my reasoning as a modder, I sort of took what they did in the game um, because they didn't have the ability. Now, Black Ice is added some ability to build um, specialized buildings, but they didn't have ability to go, oh, I want to expand coal mines, so let's spend some resources and expand coal mines within the game, so that they sort of had to try to do um, the generic levels of coal to reach it with the sort of generic ability to um, come in here with these standardized texts that are year-based, you know, you know, Germany, I think, could have easily pushed through this much faster. So having a year date on this doesn't really matter. But I don't know, say, um, I don't know, Romania might not have had the equal level of coal reserves. So they couldn't just pump in um, some more workers and some more machinery and, and double their amount of coal. They could maybe expand it a little bit, but not hugely or something. So what works for would work for Germany wouldn't work for um, other things. So that's sort of what I did is I took away a bunch and then I added a bunch more in to sort of represent the, the four year plan uh, as it's going along. So it got a lot bigger or it got, it gets bigger. So it starts out less, gets bigger, but now I'm seeing because um, of a lot of events, including mine, but it's, um, and this is, I've, Part of this, obviously, here is um, that 10% hard black guy. I pegged Third Reich events to be played at standard. Um, we're playing this at a harder difficulty, obviously, so that all of these are um, hit by a 10%. Um, oh, well, this one isn't, but, well, this is rare materials. That would be a, a heavy hit, 10%. It's a 5% and a 15% for um, oil, so that's a big hit. Um so this is changing things and so i don't know um because you're getting a 10 percent bonus for mining plus the various things so i'm whether this should just be hard to make it harder for you to play it or not i don't know but it's also part of this i've noticed that there are other events that i've not added to the game you know other submodders which great they're doing good stuff but it's sort of come pounding a little too much I think even for a hard game because Germany should not be struggling for coal steel as somebody pointed out steel isn't mined steel is manufactured or uh, iron ore mined 
and different iron ores produce different qualities of steel, even just generically, um, although there's different processes. Um, Germany definitely had steel concerns, um, but it, a lot of the steel concerns in the Swedish steel is for high quality steels, not just low quality steels. I don't know if they're using I-beams for building factory, you know, the frames for building factories, you know, around or something that you need steel. You don't want to use wrought iron, but you don't have to do high quality like um, uh, armor, you know, steel armored, um, tempered steel armored for tanks or something. Or you don't need high quality steel for um, some of the, the machining tools that machine other steels, you know, so some things you need the very high quality or you need um, high quality steel to be um, used in various manufacturing elements that are high temperature based even if they're not a um, for like like in engines or other things um, that um, you know not going to melt or wear or, or um, warp under a, a high temperature that you'll need steels for that. So generic sort of construction steels and other things, you don't want flaws in it or anything that's going to have your building collapse. But you don't need, at least in my understanding in most cases, you don't need stress, high stress steel. Like again, you might need in submarine holes or, or, or something like that, that you, you need really good steel. You know, so Germany, I don't think had a big big concern over generic steel oh we need to build a new factory need the steel to reinforce it oh we need especially like the the, the super ass cheap steel or even this um wrought iron type stuff um to reinforce you know the, the rebar to reinforce in the bunkers you look at those bunkers before they pour the concrete there's a lot of metal in there but it can be cheap ass stuff it doesn't need to be super good high quality stuff that the machine gun is made out of or or something that goes in the bunker because so the machine gun deals with a lot of heat and, and continuous operation so it's that sort of kind of thing and again some of the stuff is my fault for um, some of the steel needed to make the west wall which I was looking at generic steel um, so I'm just sort of telling you some of like, like I say my my thinking and maybe how it, that should change in future versions and of course this series is pushing me I haven't even started doing any so don't think oh there's something coming out soon I'm just sort of looking at this and mostly it'll just be adjustments and maybe a few new events but not a whole lot okay aerial mines good basically aerial drop the mines um, that would be under here and we are of course well, well one and done um, Oh well, yeah, let's do that one. Oh, okay. Um, well, I think it's the steel that we got over the 5,000. Yay, that's sort of what we've been looking for. One of the things we've been waiting to happen okay so let's um, down here okay um, collective farming that's just for the Soviets so here we our options basically um, feared national police building major movie studio um, imperial seat of government um, Central Intelligence Headquarters, Party Palace, Palace of Justice, Imperial Foreign Ministry, Finance Ministry, Imperial um, War Ministry. In my opinion, the, the three, and we've already done advanced um, education. The reason I do advanced education or when to do it first is because things that help other things to grow, you want to do earliest. So having greater leadership uh, and having greater um, research efficiency will help get through other things early. Um, having better land organization now doesn't help us because we're not at war. So we can have that once we get to war and it will most assuredly help us, but it doesn't help us. Well, the recruitment bonus would help us, but all the rest of that doesn't help us um, early on. So that's sort of how I look at 
my um, so you get two priorities one absolute benefits of a um, major building here on the one hand and on the other hand um, benefits to what current status in the game foreign ministry that helps with intelligence and ruling party support nice um, imperial seat of government gets us a little bit of leadership and a lot of ruling party support and um, you can see here if we can get to being um, so I think we're now at high but if we can get to very high um, ruling party support we get a lot of other bon bonuses so that's sort of a reason to push into that direction so Imperial seat of government is a very good one obviously right now we don't have a revolt risk problem money is nice descent change is nice but we don't need that now probably never going to get to that point counter espionage research efficiency is nice because I presume that's tech stealing from somewhere else or whatever a little bit of that some of these I just don't know if we're ever going to worry about and so it's foreign ministry is good for the ruling party support but not good enough so it's this or um, this but I think this is going to help us now with the ruling party support and but it also helps the territorial pride and national unity which will help so imperial seat of government I think is the next best option so oh, I'm going to save it here just because sometimes I've hit the wrong not this playthrough but the wrong little check box and I don't want to do that damn Okay, we're back from a crash. Um, obviously, it was a save game crash. Um, there wasn't that many. Mostly had problems. Um, just this is for you um, and you're trying to, to do with a big mega install like this. Is if I have too many save games in the save game folder... Um, I think that is a very significant element to contributing to a, a crash. So if you're getting that, sorry, I'm just clicking off to close something. Um, if you're, if you're having a, a save game crash, um, move the save games. I, I'm keeping all my old save games through the series. I'm just moved it to another folder. Um, so I can go back and keep just a few in there. So I, that's what I did, and I replayed from the <clears throat> starting of July, tried to make the exact same choices in um, uh, technology. That was about the only thing we did there. So you will be seeing some events again, because I, when you come load from an autosave, it doesn't trigger the first of the month the same. So some of the events, or basically most all the events that, you saw earlier will be repeated but they're not going to be doubled in the actual game just you'll see them twice in here so we decided to go with um, the imperial seat of government just want to make sure I click on the right one here and that will cost us money which we can afford metal which is why we were really pushing to get to um, the needed 5,000 there and of course there's also a lot of supplies is why we need to but we can afford the supplies because that's why we build a lot okay good and um, we have the imperial seat of government effects which will give us more leadership Territorial pride, ruling party support. Okay, very good. Um, single engine airframe research advance. And now, so starting in 39, which is six months away from us, I'm not planning on building a lot of fighter bombers at this point. Of course, plans change, but so right now I'm not upgrading that like I could. Yes, we do have a few. Um, you can see up the top of there one or two um we will have a few so they will get it but they're they're lower priority i'd rather do fighters or close air support or other things so 
we're not upgrading that as fast as we might otherwise do so. Let's prove artillery combined arms <coughs> function. And, well, since we, of course, we have more, we will also do direct fire unit combined arms. And that. Money for rare materials. Not from Canada, I don't think. I'll slow this down. I sort of had it going a bit fast to get to replay it back to where we were. So a lot of these popped up. Okay, not Canada. Bulgaria, yes. Um, the U.S. Yeah. Well, we're already down negative, but we'll get some more. Opportunities, probably people want to sell us stuff. Money for something, yeah, fuel. Wait a minute, was that sell fuel? No. Yeah, so close these. Okay. Now, um, self sealing tanks. Again, I think that's just, um, the way that primarily worked was a rubber liner on a fuel tank. So when the the bullet would pass through the um, uh, metal fuel tank, uh, because unless it's a very big bullet, the rubber, um, once the bullet passed through the wall of the tank, the, the rubber would close. I doubt it was a perfect seal, depending on, partly I'm thinking of the caliber of bullets hitting it and whatnot. And, um, all, but I'm sure it could easily, um, will radically reduce the amount of leakage for two, two effects. One, um, so you keep fuel in your tank, so you keep flying, get home. And two, um, leaking fuel could easily, um, mix with various elements and start fires. So, um, having that reduced down would be a significant help. Okay, so let's look back here since we're getting these. And the other one is small ship classes. Let's take a quick look over there before we start presuming. Okay, so we can research all those again, but we're going to wait till 39. So again, we'll move over here and prove direct fire unit training. Um, yeah. And, yes. I'm just trying to sort of keep this as, obviously I'm pausing a lot, but, um, sort of steady speed here. If you're getting tired of either me talking too much or, um, just the slow progress without much happening, feel free to fast forward. Um... I know YouTube has a nice little sort of preview feature that you can sort of see when an event happens. So normally I'm pretty quick on those. Eh, once in a while I do talk a long time, of course. But um, covering what the choices are for the events. So, okay, so we're reducing down here. Good. And I shouldn't keep that open while we just play. Um, Luftwaffe. Well, the reason we've lost um, being able to get the Munich Agreement is because of this is up. We could have gotten that before now. Of course, yes. Been sort of waiting for this to happen. Forming that. Um been a long time since I really looked oh there it is looked at the events the code um, 
most of them are very well coded in that they have um, conditions like Germany owns um, Austria and things like that or Vienna or something you know checks for providences just give them some appropriate commanders um, and then sometimes they'll also do a year year or a date thing and um, and the reason these are actually fairly good for Luftwaffe um, maybe they shouldn't be that high I don't know to me the standard German general is is a level three in this game um, but these are ground the AAs generally are, are ground officers that were um, in charge of batteries you know any aircraft batteries and other um, other elements and did have a certain amount of and some of them were actually former army officers that had converted over um, that did have a fair amount of training so they're not just a bunch of pilots or somebody who's well, we're all the way down to medium popularity that sucks um, no it's still upgrading yeah. and yes like I said we're oh well this time hmm energy negative spending well I guess we didn't need that but we got metal huh no I don't buying 70 and 51 we're also buying coal. I'm going to go now. Again, yes, we've already talked about this. Okay, um, new event. The Grand Service Cross. Um, the Third Reich awarded um, Henry Ford the... I'm not going to try it. Um, although the, the Grand Service Cross of the Supreme Order of the German Eagle on 30th July 1938... On Henry Ford's 78th birthday, this was awarded. This award was given to him by the German government in recognition of his pioneering work in the auto industry and in making cars available for the masses. And then I've nothing else. Well, um, here's a German period um, cover of the International Jew. Um, I think in many, in most ways. Um, Henry Ford was not a national socialist, as I've come to understand national socialist. But he was an anti-Semite. He was, um, you know, I Ford did sort of build, in which was common back in those days, a company town, in the sense that um, he built the Ford automotive plant sort of away from um, a lar large, you know, any large city, so that the people um, in this day and age um, would have a difficulty in getting to it so most of them lived in company owned housing so they paid rent to the company though my understanding again this is my understanding without maybe too many hard facts I don't think it was like um, where in some cases they were very high um, rent charges or very high prices this really wasn't it was just sort of a way to make a little you know competitive shall we say relatively competitive rates but just the way for him to make it instead of somebody else to make it so you know it was pay rent rates to you know pay rent to the to the Ford company have company stores so that the stores sell stuff to the people and so it's just a way to make back um, a percentage of the salary one of the things that the Ford company um, did do is that they um, had a lot of leftover wood and so they that was useless I mean, you know like bits and pieces of wood uh, so that they set up if I remember correctly um, a charcoal building factory near one of their the things so that they turn these um, lumps of, of otherwise useless wood into charcoal to sell so that they're sort of maximizing the resources to make money so it wasn't something they would either throw away or try to sell off useless pieces of wood to somebody else to make charcoal they set that up as a business and 
um, the company is still selling charcoal to the, uh, the, the sub company. I don't know if they're still connected or not, still sells the charcoal today. So he was very much of a capitalist in that sense. I don't think he was big on to, you know, government owned nationalized industries and stuff. And obviously he is the pioneer of the affordable car and particularly in, in an era when until like obviously we're just starting we talked about the Volkswagen here in Germany most of the auto workers in a Mercedes factory would never own a Mercedes car I'm sure the 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 top elite designers and some of the the top elite mechanic floor people or whatever but the great bulk of the people that worked in those cars or in the car manufacturing factory would not be able to afford to buy it and we're not even just talking about the luxury models we're talking about you know are the most luxurious models we're talking about the sort of, sort of standard models they couldn't now that still may be a, a thing today with you know i don't know that most rolls royce manufacturers or something um you know people that work in the factory can afford a rolls royce but they can all afford a car basically um i think a lot of the germans who make mercedes can afford a, a mercedes because you know maybe not the most expensive models but decent model so this is where ford was building the first person first real setup to build a car for maybe not everybody at the time um because not everybody is going to be able to afford it but if you had a relatively decent job and were had the ability to save your money um to some degree you could afford to buy a car and that's what he pioneered but um oh and um Everything that I know about Ford, he was a very patriotic American. And once, you know, the idea of the conflict between Germany and America happened, he was 100%. He was no, to the best of my knowledge, again, uh, and there is no evidence showing that he was any sort of fifth columnist type person that wanted to see a German victory. No, he, he was an American patriot. But I don't think it was just awarded because there was the Ford plant in Germany and he helped the kind of stuff. I think it was because... The book that he wrote in English was widely, or was translated, um, not in other language, but translated into German, and widely publicized around Germany um, during this period. And so that um, he, you know, the, the German state did this. And at this time, you know, in 38, there wasn't nearly the negative elements of it coming back at him accepting a foreign award sort of like i guess you know if someone i don't know accepts an award from the the queen of england in america now sure you're going to get some radical leftists that are going to be oh you accept a reward from a monarchy that um, gender inequality you know and blah 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 you know and has a social class strata that that's you know that stratified that, that Britain is stratified in its social classes and so you're 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 accepting these kind of unequal yeah okay most Americans wouldn't think it's a negative thing some would for a lot of Americans at this time getting a German award wasn't seen as such the negative thing that it especially a Nazi German award as it will become but it was sort of interesting now so you remember we had the Time magazine of the um, Edward Bernays cover it now we're having this improved by two but we lose a little money for making the fancy on badge and giving it to them we've already had this event before okay yes money for supplies yes our supplies for money and yes we've already had that event and we already had that Okay, now here we go. We're really starting to get into the the elements of the conflict. Um, I tried to, in a way, show you the, I'll use the term, ratcheting up of the tensions by the German government using both German um, propaganda and sort of locally inside of Czechoslovakia created um, propaganda incident so this is now becoming apparent to the outside world that there's a conflict coming between germany and czechoslovakia okay this is no longer something that is just sort of happening off in the distance this is now becoming a real concern so 
<coughs> excuse me, our diplomatic service reports the British government demanded that Bernays request a moderator. Not wishing to um, sever his government ties with Western Europe, Bernays reluctantly accepted the British appointed Lord Runciman, the former Liberal cabinet minister who arrived in Prague on the 3rd of August with instructions to persuade Bernays to agree to a plan acceptable to the Sudeten Germans. Okay, so remember, particularly um, France, but also sort of de facto, I think, within the, with Britain, Britain is, they have a, you know, a certain level of alliance with Czechoslovakia. And so this is looking like the idea that the Germans are, are getting ready and willing to invade um, Czechoslovakia, at least to get the Sudetenlands. Um, Bernays is obviously hoping, thinking that the Western allies particularly France and Britain, are going to support him vigorously in maintaining Czech integrity, uh, territory integrity. Um, this is obviously not the case, and he's basically been informed, forced, you know, um, demanded that this be settled. And this... I don't think there's a huge change in... Obviously, there is a gearing up of war, but a huge change from August 39 to... Um, or August 38 to September 39 um, for France in the preparations for war that because France had built its Maginot line um, used that as the main bulwark of, of defense um, new and I don't know how much they coordinated with say Belgium to create these fortifications in Liège you know the famous Ebenemal fortress but there were other fortifications not major but enough with sort of the idea that it would be um, blocking enough for a um, another German rush through this part of territory, the territory. I don't know. Does that really, or did that really come that far down into that? I, I, I don't know. But um, to where it should really just be one province, I don't know. Um, they really did sort of think the um, Ardennes forest here was a bit you know um that doesn't look very foresty does it but um that's a little bit more foresty looking um but that was really something sort of a barrier to modern rushed you know mechanized forces and you know is um it was well known that france did have a plan to help secure um, the Belgian frontier, or Belgian's defensives, but um, Belgium didn't really, ended up retreating back a bit more than the French wanted to do it, and Belgium sort of reply, relied on the French a bit more than they should have. But so they they had this army. Now this army was not a fully mobilized army. It was an army that was designed for a um, mass mobilization and, you know, when, when the conflict sort of are, is getting close and arising. So they were sort of set. It was sort of the British who really realized that in 38, they were not prepared for a war with Germany. Um, there were a lot of people in Britain, you know, I don't know if you can believe this, but thought that, hey, if we build weapons, that's a provocative thing. And somebody else will feel the need to build weapons themselves and might cause a war. Wow. Building weapons... How do I put this? Building weapons does not cause wars. Being a lunatic regime, yeah, like North Korea is, and then building nuclear weapons causes wars because you're the lunatic regime. So it's just, let's put it in perspective. If um, tomorrow, because of North Korea and or um, China, um, and the U.S. believes that the U.S. is going to be pacifistic in, in this part of the world and never fight to defend them, so, uh, defend anything here. If you're sort of continuing an Obama-type policy, like, well, we're withdrawing our troops in South Korea because they could be provocative to the North Koreans, and the North Koreans might think that that is a 
somehow a, a um, oh, I don't know, a threat to them. So we're going to withdraw our troops and we're going to pledge never to use nuclear weapons unless somebody uses nuclear weapons on us first, uh, no matter what. And Japan might be going, oh, shit. Um, the U.S. is never going to use nuclear weapons. Never use it unless somebody uses nuclear weapons on them or maybe on somebody else. That means or that means just China or somebody could decide to start landing um, divisions in um, Japan and the U.S. may not do anything and wouldn't shield it with its nuclear umbrella or something like that. So if Japan, say, starts, because Japan is not a crazy regime like it, well, I don't know if it was, but its aggressive regime most assuredly was, at, you know, in this 1936, 45 era, but today, so if today they were starting to gonna build nuclear weapons, that wouldn't be causing wars because they're not a rogue state nation that's going to do it. They're not going to be giving them off to terrorists. Similarly, like Iran, in my opinion, is another sort of... The reason I think Iran is a crazy, irrational government is because that they're waiting for the 12th Imam to come or whatever it is to that's going to cause the, the great last wars of humanity and end of time kind of things. And so that, and they're trying to hasten it. So, you know, end of days and trying to cause the end of days and the Great War. So they're a crazy regime in that sense. Um, and they're also quite willing to hand, hand off stuff to terrorists. And they might be willing to hand off nuclear weapons to terrorists. Or just maybe nuclear waste or something to terrorists. I don't know. So, and we're not even talking something so dramatic as nuclear weapons or for Britain are saying, oh, well, we would build something that we wouldn't have built otherwise. It's just basic armament. Britain hadn't armed. So they're right now in this time period trying to keep a war from happening and realizing that they really do need to start arming up themselves. So this is a precursor here that Czechoslovakia will get to push down this. Okay, another knock der Amazon. Another one of um, Christian Weber's... Um, Party nights in um, Munich. Um, this is sort of the hunting motif this year. So you can see there the women paraded, whatever. So we can do that, and which we will lose some descent, which we're trying to bring down now, or not, which will gain descent. No, we want to have a party. Um, industrial zone is ready. We no longer have, or I don't know, maybe we'll have it. Okay, and yes, we had before, of course. So we need to now come up here. Now I'm seeing that we're all the way to making the turpits. Um, and we, we are going to want to reduce that down. So let's... Obviously it's not forever, but significantly bring that up. Not hugely, but enough to try to bring down that. And Germany, I will say, was not ready for war with Britain either. And that was what's going to come up, and we'll talk about it at that point. Okay, and this again, of course. Um, bombing sites advanced. Um, important thing, not just having bombs, but being able to hit your target. Okay, um... Yeah, we'll do coordination. Okay, I think we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank you so much for watching. I want to.